welcome everybody to Get Organized Challenge, Photo Organization Challenge. Now, I just want to quickly, we used to do this challenge kind of towards the end of the series, um, but people got so overwhelmed because they have so many photos that we bumped it into this third spot so that you can work a little bit at a time, a little bit on it, a, a little bit at a time as we go through each challenge. Just like paper, right? Papers can be a big overwhelming thing because we have so much paper. So we start with paper and then photos so that you're gonna get an opportunity to work through a little bit at a time. Which brings me to another point, um, is there's been a lot of chatter on the group uh, about working in order and following the steps. And I just wanna say, um, I know there's a lot of conversation going on there. If you've been in the challenge for a while, um, you kind of know what's coming next and you know what the procedures are and, and how it works. If you're new, the challenge really is designed to give you um, every opportunity to be successful. Um, and when you are successful, you'll keep going, keep moving forward. And, and that's one of the reasons we do things in s little small batches. Now, you're wel welcome to sort 10, 10 feet of paper a week if you, if you have the time or, or energy to do that that's fine but I don't want other people to feel like oh I'm not getting as much done or I, I'm not you know I only did my six inches of paper or whatever it is if you just keep working steadily through you're gonna reap the rewards right the the way the program is set up is not based on um, my uh, well it's my design but there, there's a lot of research into how your brain works and why people are organized naturally and why they're not and how different brain function works. And that's what this class is built around. So if you want to work ahead and you're, you're doing extra, that's great. But if you're not, if you're just you know, staying the course, you should be, feel very good about what you're doing and just keep moving forward. So don't let yourself get overwhelmed and don't, let, don't be comparing yourself to other people, especially people who have taken the challenge before so they're kind of leaps and bounds ahead. Um, you can come back every time we do the challenge and work a little bit more and eventually you're going to get to the point where a lot of the um, participants are where every time they tune in they're just tweaking things or, or tightening things up that have gotten out of control since the last challenge. So, All right, enough said. Enough of a lecture, my mom lecture. All right, let's get started with um, photos. Oh. Okay, so what we're really going to start with is this week's winner. So, And the first winner is... Jeannie Derry from Toledo, Ohio, and she submitted her um, post via email. And she says, I've been working on my paper organization all week and noting my progress in my widget notebook. Yay! Uh, this notebook is a miracle. It holds me accountable and I love it. It's keeping me on track. Maybe I'll actually get organized this time around. I've been following the GOC every time since it was presented in 2013. Well, Jeannie, I hope the widget notebook is the difference maker for you. It's been a huge difference maker for me. I work on my room, then life happens, I get off track, but it this time seems different since my widget notebook, and I feel like I'm really going to do much better this time. Thank you, Tiffany. So I'm glad you love that. I love, I love widget. I love it. Okay, Tammy says, done. Had my concerns, but done. I am awesome. That's what her post says. That is the th that is what we're looking for, right? Get your stuff done and feel amazing. We are awesome. What's your superpower? Organizing. Yay. Um, she just goes on to say that she loves how her paper looks. And I looked through it when it was all small scraps. And, and with a Grinch-like grin, I threw it away. Oh, just, it's a great post. Tammy Brew. If that's how B-R-U-G-H. If that's how you say, uh, if that's how you say your name. I hope I'm not butchering it. Um, but just some great um, posts this week. Congratulations to those two winners, and Karen will be reaching out to you uh, so you can collect your prize. And then our two ugly paper winners are Deb Phelps for her Kiss the Bride paper and Lisa Painter, whose paper was so ugly it shall remain unnamed. It is the name we cannot say. Um, but congratulations to both of you, and I hope those papers made it into your purge box. So this week is Photo Organization Week, and we will have an ugly photo contest this week as well. Karen will post something up on the Facebook group. So if you have an ugly photo, it can be a photo of yourself or your family or landscape or whatever you want to post up there. Just some ugly photo that you have been holding on to that should have been purged out long ago. 
which takes me back to one other little thing that I want to address. These ugly whatever contests are all just fun. They're all just an opportunity for us to laugh at ourselves for things that we've purchased or things that we maybe thought, like I said with paper, were attractive in the past or with our photos to laugh at ourselves or our families or things that we've done where we've generated this ugly photo. So it's all in good fun. If you don't want to participate in the photo contest, you don't have to. You don't have to con comment on people's pictures, but it is just really a good time to see people sort of just laugh at themselves and, and what they've held on to regardless of how ugly it is for however long. So make sure as you're sorting photos this week you are looking for that ugly photo for the ugly photo contest. Okay the challenge goal this week is to have a strong system for organizing and storing our photos so that when we are ready to scrap we can get exactly what we need quickly and easily and get busy on those projects. This is for both the digital and physical printed photos. So what are you going to need? You're going to need some sort of storage tool for your physical photos and some sort of storage tool for your digital photos. I just use <coughs> the I just use regular file folders on my computer for sorting and storing pictures, right? I don't use anything fancy. We'll talk a little bit later about tagging. There are some photo sorting softwares out there. Um, my husband uses Lightroom. I actually have Picasa loaded on my computer, which does a good job of pulling all your pictures in. I don't actually use it for photo sorting and storage, though. Um, you're going to need a perpetual calendar of some type. Um, <coughs> sorry. It can either be physical or on your computer. Um, a family timeline. And you're going to need some things like folders and paper and sticky notes for labeling things. I'm going to have take a, I'm going to get a little cough drop right now because for some reason as soon as I start in front of the camera I just can't stop coughing. Maybe I'm allergic to the camera. <coughs> I hope not. All right. What's our first step? Long timers, people have been with me for many challenges. The very first step is always gather, right? Gather up all of your photos. Photos have this tendency to be in the junk drawer, in your desk drawer, in the driver's side pocket door of your car, maybe in the glove box. We pick them up from wherever they were printed and then we put them wherever we can stash them for a moment. So go around to all those obvious spots and gather up all your photos. So get all your photos together. That's your first step. The same thing with your digital photos. You want to gather all of those together. And that's when something like um, Microsoft Office Picture Manager or Picasa, <coughs> I say Picasa and I always get in trouble for that because I don't think it's available anymore, but it's what I use. So um, I think Mac has iPhoto or whatever. So those things will grab all your photos and tell you where they're located in your computer. So if you need to hunt them up, that's a good way to go. So gather digital, gather physical. The next step is to get them, th that you have them together. You've got random stuff, most of us do. You're, well, you're going to choose some sort of photo storage. So with your digital photos, it's going to be, yikes, with your digital photos, it's going to be your computer, right? So you're going to apply this same strategy your computer that I'm applying to my physical photo. So in this box, I've got what we're going to label, or we would label, a pile of pictures or something, need to sort. This is where I'm putting all the pictures that I have gathered up or that are everywhere and they've just turned into kind of messy stacks and piles and they're not sorted or organized in any way. These all need to be sorted, right? So the first step, gather up and put all of your photos together in one place. So I use this big box. You guys have seen these before. Um, but you can use, this is just a regular photo storage box from anywhere that sells them, right? You can use these. It's a little bit smaller, right? You can use the photo storage cases from Michaels or Joanne. So I could pull this closer. So this is one of those. 
right? This one inside this case, there's all these little cases, right? What do I like about this? I like the same thing everybody likes about it. There's nothing more fun for someone who's organized than something that's all neat and tidy and everything packs together in a neat, perfect little way, right? So that's what I like about it. Um, what I don't like about it is there's no way to label your photos once they're in there. The box is four by six. It only holds four by six. There's no way to put any tags or any other things in there with your photos. The other thing I don't like about it is that once it's full, it weighs a ton. So it's cute and handy and available at Michael's, which is always good because you can use your 40 off coupon. But in the big picture, it's going to be difficult to sort those photos because you've got boxes in boxes and that's always tough. Okay, first step, all your photos need to sort, okay? Second step is to sort by year. So I'm going to start with this box and then the first thing I'm going to do is sort it by year, okay? This box, as you get smarter, this box is, I don't know if you can see in there, um, this box I'm already sorting by year. So as you move forward with your new organization strategy, anything new that you bring into your craft room, you want to stick with those strategies so you're not reinventing. So this is 2018, and you can see I've already sorted it chronologically in this box, right? So I'm going to sort everything by year first, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort by... So I've got them sorted by year. So I'm going to label the box, 2018. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group them by event. And um, they're always going to be chronologically. Always chronological. That's, that's what we're after, right? Why chronological for photos? So people have a temptation to... I'm just going to move these things out of my way real quickly. People have a temptation to sort by... Um, People. These are pictures of my son. Hey, my sign came off. So much for my, my adhesive there. These are pictures of my son. These are pictures of my daughter, right? I, I strongly discourage you from doing that at this point. If you're working on an album for your son or daughter, that's the time to pull things out of chronological order and put them into your project planner, which we'll talk about later. But chronological... How many of you, if I could see as you show of hands, have pulled out pictures that you thought you were going to scrap and then they, you didn't end up scrapping them? And now they're in another pile somewhere else and you don't remember where they are, if you even remember to think about that you have them. And when you go to your chronological box or file to look for them, they're not there anymore, right? So keep everything filed chronologically until you're ready to scrap, okay? So that's my, my clue for you. Okay, so then what do you need to do before you even start sorting? You need to create a family timeline. And a family timeline is going to guide you through the process of organizing your photos chronologically. And you can make a family timeline any number of ways, right? So I've seen people who literally use the wall of their craft room or family room to create a family timeline and like just put lines off or different things that happen and attach photos and it's really really cool it's a cool like wall display you don't have to get that complicated right this is one of the first family timelines I made it was literally a family timeline and what's on what do you want to put on your family timeline you just want to put the big stuff right and then you can add little stuff as you go so See if you can. So like this one, which says 2004, we went to see the butterflies at National Bridges Park in California. And as I came across those pictures, I added it to that timeline. Okay. So whenever I find pictures from that trip, it's easy for me to go back and go, oh, that's 2004, and put it in the right place. Okay. So you can do a literal family timeline. You can make your family timeline on index cards. 
right? So one of the upsides to these is that they're small. The downside to it is you either have to spread them out everywhere or you're constantly filing through your file box, but it, wor it works equally well. I am got inspired because of this album project that I'm working on right now to create a family timeline notebook, which I'm putting up a little blog post about, so you'll see more of it on the blog. But I just I added a tab. Um, I added a tab for every year, for like 30 years. This is a 100-page notebook, and then um, I can just go in and it and write notes as things happen, but I can also backtrack as I'm organizing photos and add notes to older years too. So this start, this book, I started it when my son was born in 1996, and it goes 30 years forward, which I think will cover all the scrapbooking I do about my boys until they're well into adulthood, and then hopefully someone else will be scrapbooking about them or somebody else will be scrapbooking as well. But the nice thing about it is, as I'm working on it, I am adding, you know, as I come across little photos, I am adding things to, well, you can see how this fell out, right? So this is 2007. It's one of my favorite pictures ever. I found a duplicate copy of it. So I'm going to put it in the 2007 page, and then I'm going to add it. I'm just going to put it in there so like you can see what I've done with 2018. So it kind of becomes, you know, kind of a journal, a timeline, a scrapbook, and I don't know, it's just really, I'm just having a really uh, good time with it, right? Just using up some of my crafting supplies, ta-da, and, um, and also creating that family timeline. It's easy to flip through also, and then I can just add, like I did, I found that picture, I could just poke it in the right date and then add it into here, which is where it's going to end up. It's not fancy. It's not complicated. It just makes it really easy to keep track of things. And then I haven't written anything on the front yet because I don't really like my own penmanship, but I'm hoping when I'm at Home Shopping Network next time in March, uh, Kelly Klapstein from Kelly Crates is going to be there, and she does beautiful hand lettering, and I'm going to try and convince her to give me a free hand lettering class while I'm there. I'll let you know how that works out. Okay. So you got a family timeline. Now you are ready to sort pictures. You're going to use your family timeline and you're going to create some sorting guides, okay? So you're going to get your photos gathered. You're going to get your photos sorted by year, right? This is the step for when you're ready to put them in order for scrapbooking, okay? So you are going to create some sorting guidelines, which you can use for the years as well. But you can see these all have little notes on them. So when I have a stack of photos, I can sort through the photos using the notes that I've written on here. And at the bottom, this is kind of silly, but, but probably not silly. I have only two kids, but if you had like four kids or more, then it would probably be super helpful. So at the bottom, I just wrote LT, that's London. I think, and he turned eight in 2004, and then Max turned six. London went from second grade to third grade. Max went from kindergarten to first grade, right? So when I'm looking at pictures of Max in kindergarten during the St. Patrick's Day celebration at school, I know that that was in 2004. I don't have to do any math or count things on my fingers because I have my little cheat notes. And as I go through and find things, so here, this is a picture that's SeaWorld 2007. If I go to my 2007 template, SeaWorld's right there. I see the SeaWorld picture. I know where it goes, right? So it's easy. It makes it easy to sort by year if you're challenged by that. But it's going to make it really easy once you've got those things sorted. And I'm going to use this as an example. So if I... I'm getting these pictures ready to scrap. Those are my pictures that I just took on our trip to India. I am not going to scrap all those pictures, right? So once I have them sorted, this is all the India pictures from 2018, I'm going to move on to the next step. Oh, let's talk about sticky notes for a minute. So you can see that I use 
Plus, shut your flat tabs. Um, I use them everywhere, but this is the reason I love them because you can they don't get folded over. If you have paper sticky notes, which you can also use, but they get bent, then they're going to get folded over and you're not going to be able to read them anymore, right? They don't pop back up like uh, the plastic sticky notes, which is why I like those. So sticky notes are a great way to label your, so I have these, some of them just by month, my monthly snapshots, and then this is by the India trip. And it just has the label for India on it. So when I look in this box and I think, okay, now I'm ready to set up my India photos to be ready to scrap, I'm, it's easy for me to go into the box and find exactly those photos. Here's what happens. And it happened to me just today, right, with these pictures right here that I pulled out as an example. If you take all of these pictures or take all these pictures out, and put them on your desk and try to plan and uh, try to work scrap through these pictures for your India trip, you are going to get distracted in a joyful way. But as you look through the pictures, those are all, oh, look at London riding in the rickshaw. That's so cute. That's so fun. Oh, there's my mom. There's a dog. Right, so you're, you, you get distracted into the process of looking at the pictures and remembering the story instead of scrapbooking, which you're supposed to be doing when you have pulled these out to scrap. So, after you sort chronologically, after you get some basic labels in that give you the year, the month, so everything's kind of basically sorted, now you've got your box of chronologicals, now it's time to organize your photos based on what you're going to scrapbook about and how many pages you're going to do. This is difficult for people, right? What is to get their brain around making choices first, but as you know, I've heard it said it before, your brain loves to know what the rules are, what the guidelines are, right? So before you start sorting these pictures into your ready to scrap, uh, mode, you want to decide to yourself, how many pictures, what's my guideline for photos that I'm going to put on a 12 by 12 layout? My guideline is six. So for every 12 by 12 layout I'm going to do, I choose six pictures. That's it. Some people choose four. Some people choose ten. You can set your guideline at whatever you want uh, or whatever you think is best for you. Um, but be realistic. And know that it's just a guideline. So if for some reason you set your guideline at six, but you only found four pictures for that, or you only liked four pictures for that particular subject, or maybe you ended up saying, oh, I like these eight pictures, and you're going to you know, cut them up or whatever, and you're going to put them all on that layout, you can still choose that. But it's a guideline, and your brain makes decisions so much faster and so much more efficiently when it has something to base those decisions on, and that's where the guideline comes in. So, I'm, my guideline is six. So the first thing I'm going to do is establish my guideline, and the second thing I'm going to do is decide how many pictures I'm going to do for that event and what I'm going to do them for. So, this box, well, not the whole box, I'm doing one album for 2018. That's just, I'm just calling it Travel 2018. It was a brutal and exciting travel year for me and so I'm going to do just one um, I'm looking for my little cheat notes here okay I'm going to do just one book that's all travel so I first I sorted by chronologically then I labeled big groups India, for example, and then I made these little cheat notes. I'm going to do a double page spread that gives me 12 pictures for Panama. That's it. I have to choose 12 pictures, right? So here are the things that we did in Panama that I want to make sure that I include in that layout, right? So I'm going to go through, and when I choose my 12 pictures, I'm going to tick these off and make sure I chose pictures that represent everything that we did in Panama. It's right there. Now I'm just going to take that little note and I'm going to include it with however I have my pictures stored. Right? So whether I decide to keep them in a storage box like this 
or I'm I've got I've got mine right here in six by six, I mean in perfect six pages. So each one of these pages represents a double page layout, six pictures over here, six pictures over here. So I'm going to save my Panama notes right there with my pictures. And now when I'm ready to scrap this album, I've got my pictures. Not only are they pre-sorted by layout, the whole album is pre-sorted that way in chronological order. I've already made my choices. So when I'm ready to scrap, I can just grab that out that binder and get busy. It prevents me from going back to this chronological box with 200 more pictures of Panama and getting lost in the moment and revisiting those pictures, which I know is fun and I know is part of the joy of scrapbooking, but if you want to be productive, you got to get rid of those distractions and kind of focus in on what exactly you want to do, right? I'm going to talk more about project planning in um, the last class or this class number seven. But I did those little cheat notes for everywhere. So I've, as I sort through these pictures, right, as I go through my box of pictures, there's India. I've got my stack of India pictures, and now I can go, okay, I need the pictures for, you know, getting there, the train, the uh, Delhi, Kerala, whatever it is, and I know I'm going to sort six pictures for each one of those layouts, right? So it makes it a lot easier to get through this stack to check off what I know I want to scrapbook about. Now, one other thing that I do um, annually, and I do it when I'm doing something like this as well, is I, I start this little pile that I call snapshots, right? So these are pictures that don't really fit the, what I'm scrapbooking about. They're just kind of fun. They don't have a bunch of story around them. There's not a lot of journaling to do. They're just fun pictures that I want to keep. And at the end of each section of this travel uh, album, I will have a page that's just labeled Snap India Snapshots. And it'll just be a conglomeration of however many pictures are left, six Maybe I can get 10 on there if I cut them up, you know, and it's just snapshots from the trip, right? So if you're kind of a little bit queasy about like, what am I going to do? How am I going to choose? You can always use that sort of safety net of a snapshot page or section that you can pile into as well. And then you've got those extra pictures that don't really fit with the story. So um, I was talking to a friend, a scrapper friend, scrap sister, and she said, oh my gosh, how can you take a trip like that, like India, and only do four pages of that trip. How, how, can, how can you do that? There's so many more pictures. Well, I can tell my story. <laughs> First of all, you all already know I'm sort of obsessed with organization and efficiency, so I tend to pare things down uh, more than most people. But I can tell my story in those four or six pages, whatever it ends up being, and I can show where we were and things that we had, and I can do my journaling because I'm really just focused on the photos and the trip more than I am focused on um, making the page an amazing work of art, right? So I can really pare it down. I tend to make my title pages, so when I do the title page, India, it'll be an amazing work of art, I hope, at least I'll think so. Um, but I want my readers to keep looking and be interested in the story. And so if, if what the, the pictures that they're looking at are constantly interesting rather than we rode on a camel, I only need one picture of us riding on a camel to tell that story. I don't need a picture of the camel standing up and us riding and the camel getting down and the camel guide and all of those things, right? I want to keep my story moving so that my reader stays interested in the story rather than just like, oh yeah, that's good, that's good. Mo oh, more sand, more camels, right? So that's how, that is personally how I scrapbook. I'm always interested in what my reader's gonna see, what they're gonna find interesting, and will they stay connected to the story and interested in the story. Everybody's different. But, so regardless of whether I'm only doing three or four pages for India, you might do an entire album of India. You're still going to use this same process, six pictures per page or four or eight or whatever your guideline is, to go through the process and choose those things. I'll tell you another benefit to sort of mapping out your project before you start is that when you're buying or choosing 
or ordering, shopping for background paper and embellishments, it makes it a lot easier to get enough without getting too much or, or too little, right? So I, I did a Disney album years ago. I didn't pre-plan any of it. I bought all the paper that I thought I needed at the scrapbook store. And then when I finished, I ended up doing, you know, a few more pages. Well, I was using the consistent background papers all the way through. So now I had to go back to the store to get four more sheets of background paper. And guess what? They didn't have it. So now that I know what I'm doing, what I want for background, I go, okay, I need six sheets of background paper plus an extra, you know, if I'm doing six, I'm going to get an extra two. So every three papers, I get an extra one. So that just in case I mess something up, I have it. But now I'm going to be able to put that together and plan that out and be really efficient when I'm actually sitting down to scrapbook. All right. So you're going to sort onto your sorting guides. You're going to plan, then sort onto your sorting guides. Then you're going to sort by event, right? So you got everything for 2007. Now you've got 2007 Christmas, 2007 spring break, 2007 whatever it is. Then you're going to put those in chronological order and you're going to use some sort of sticky note to indicate what they are. And then when you're ready to actually scrap whatever it is, then you're going to pull all of those out. You're going to have made some sorting guides that say how many pages you're going to do for each thing. And you're going to sort those for how many pages you're going to do for each thing. And then you can store them until you're ready to work with them. So I store mine right in the binder, but you can store them in anything that's going to work for you. File box, so this is the 4x6 fab file, has notes on the front. Uh, again, it's got multiple, like I, I scrapbook for Max and London and myself, I'm the M mom, London Max. Right, so all of those things that are going on those pages for me, for both the boys, they're all ready to go. So now when I'm gonna scrap this event, this is uh, part of the Disney collection, I'm gonna pull this out and I have all the pictures pre-sorted, I have my journaling notes and I can get right to work, right? But I'm not distracted by everything else that's in this box or everything else that's in a big box, right? So go step by step. Um, through the sorting process and then set yourself up with your ready to scrap photos. Now you can keep your ready to scrap photos in your um, in a chronological box as well. Whatever is easiest for you uh, when you're actually ready to start on that project then you want to pull it together and create a project planner which we talk about in class number seven but in terms of the photo sort those are the steps that you want to take and pre-planning uh, the pictures that you're going to scrap is going to make it a lot easier later when you're ready to pull things out of that box, right? I have to catch up with myself here. Okay, so you're going to apply the same principles, to, excuse me, to digital scrapbooking. You're going to have a file, that's photos, and inside that file you're going to have files by year, and inside the year file so you're going to have files by event season depending on you know what you scrap about a lot of that has to do with how old your kids are and what you're doing in your life right so inside the 2018 file folder if i had, don't, didn't have these printed then i would have a file for india and a file for canada and a file for the uk all all or in chronological order in there okay so when we talk about chronological order and photos here's a couple of tips i actually there's a uh, video, um, blog post that I just did, and it's called Five Tips for Digital, where I talk about um, labeling or naming your digital files. And one of the important things about naming your digital files is the way that you put the date in so that your computer will sort them always chronologically. So it's four digits of a year two digits of a month, and two digits of a day. And I'm going to ask Karen if she can put a link to that blog post in the follow-up email today that kind of goes over that. But that allows your computer to sort chronologically. If you put the month first, 01, and then the date, 15, and then the year, 2019, whatever it is, and then you try to sort, you're going to get all the 01s first. So it's not going to sort by year and then by month and then by date. It's going to sort by month first, right? So you want to start with the year and then the month and then the date and use two digits for each. And then you want to follow that um, with 
a tag or a rename that tells something about the photo. And it doesn't have to be this, you don't have to do this individually for every photo. And initially, you can do just one big, so if I download photo, I downloaded photos from India, right? I download by the day, and then I label all of them with the date and the word India. I might have put the major city we were in at that time, right? So they're all downloaded, they're all grouped together that way. I can now sort by date, I can sort by the word India, and it's going to pull up all the photos on my computer that date and tagged India. So you don't have to do individual things, but as you sort of pare it down, um, you can add more tags. The more tags or the more things you add to the name, the easier or the the more specific you're going to be able to get when you're sorting and looking for photos. So uh, let's, for example, let's talk about birthday photos. So I'm always going to use the date. Then I'm going to use the name of the person whose birthday it is. London, my son London, LT, and then BDAY is how I abbreviate birthday. Okay. So now when I search my computer, I can search the year. LT and B day and only get one year or I can search uh, LT and B day and get every picture of every birthday that I have tagged that way on my computer for London's birthday or I can just search birthday B D A Y and I'm going to get everybody's birthday pictures for every year right I consistently tag or name my photos the same way which is where your perpetual calendar comes in um, so that I can sort consistently by people, by events, by um, places. So, and it's really simple. So, perpetual calendar, if you've never seen one, this is a calendar. This is really an old one. Karen Foster, not even sure she's still around or that brand is still around. Um, but <clears throat> I have my, the way, the year on the back, this is my reminder of how to, um, how to, write the date. No dashes, no spaces, nothing like that. Again, when you're uh, naming photos, the least keystrokes that you have to do, the more likely it is that you're actually going to execute um, the, the consistent strategy for organizing, for tagging your digital photos. So uh, the year is always the same. And then on each of these you, little calendar days, the idea behind the perpetual calendar or sometimes called a birthday calendar is that you use the same calendar forever and it just reminds you this is January whose birthdays it are it, it are it is in January and I put the year they were born after right so I know how old they are also Lori Payne was born in 61 so when I send her a birthday card I can send her a harassing card that says you're old okay but you then you see this little one that this how there this is highlighted in yellow New Year's Day NYD, uh, Valentine's Day, VDAY, St. Patrick's Day, STP. This is how I remember how I code things from year to year to year. So this is from 2010. For eight years, I've been using these same codes. So if I have pictures from a St. Patrick's Day celebration, I'm going to always add that tag STP. And then I can sort through my computer and just search for in the photo file for STP. And it's going to bring up every St. Patrick's Day photo that I have had since I started doing this, right? So think about that. Think about how much fun that is if you can find those things. So if my son um, is having a St. Patrick's Day party, I can take pictures of him from St. Patrick's Day from when he was in grade school, middle school, and high school. Now he's getting ready to graduate college and create something fun that's like St. Patrick's Day through the years or whatever. I can only do that because, well, you could, you could do it, but it would be a lot more work if you weren't tagging things that way, right? Now, the beautiful thing about this is for almost a decade, we've been printing digital photos. So I've got the digital copies, and I've got the printed copies. And I have just put a P on my photo file or in my fo photo file that says these are printed, which means if I wanted to find those pictures, I could go to my, ca my, my calendar year box, for that year, that month, and I would find those pictures from St. Patrick's Day for whatever year that it was, if they'd already been printed. I would also know, ding, 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 that they had been printed and because of the P, and when I go to the box, they're not there, so I know I've already scrapped them, and if I want more of those, I'm going to have to reprint them. 
So most of us don't throw away our duplicates or the pictures that we don't use, right? We just are going to leave them in chronological order. And then when things like this come up, you can go back to that box and find exactly what you're looking for. It's fast and it's easy. And I know they're in the box because I added a P to the title of my file. St. You know, Patrick's Day 2018-P, that means those have been printed. Okay. So the perpetual calendar is going to get you through that. It's also going to remind you how you label people's names. So here's my sister. Her name is Teresa. I code everything Tisa for her, T-I-S-A, short and sweet and easy. Now, I code everything Tisa for her, even though she was born Teresa Irene. When she was a kid, we called her Tisa, and then she got into middle school, she decided she wanted to be called Terry, and then after high school, she decided she wanted to use her middle name, which was Irene, and then as she got older, she went back to Teresa. So if I was using Teresa, Terry, Irene, Teresa, and tagging things with her name through the years, I would have to search all four of those names. This keeps it easy. Same thing when people get married. Whatever that tag is, you don't have to worry that they changed their last name. It's all going to be easy to just find them. So create a perpetual calendar. It can be a physical calendar like this. You can buy them on the internet. You can do the same thing by creating a, just an Excel spreadsheet that goes through the months as well. Or you could include it on your family timeline if you wanted to do something like that, right? Just um, include some pages on the front, in the front section because you're planning ahead, which I didn't do. Um, that is your perpetual calendar or your tag, tag names for how you're going you're gonna to name people. I didn't think about that before I did it. Maybe I'm going to use the back pages because I have a few extra in my book. Okay, so digital is going to be exactly the same though. You're going to be year, event, and then once you sort the pictures, say if I was sorting the India trip pictures digitally before I printed them, I would go into India and I would say, okay, I'm going to start six... <coughs> six files for the six things I'm chronicling in India, getting there, Delhi, the train. And then as I look through the pictures, I would move the picture or a copy of it. I know some people kind of freak out about they want to keep everything together. So I could just copy and paste. So pictures of getting there, copy, paste into the file folder. Now when I'm ready to print those, I can go right to the online Costco.com where I have my pictures printed. And I can upload those um, pictures, and I've chosen the pictures. I know how many I'm going to do. I know what sizes they are. I can download them to Costco and have them all printed. And I can add a capital P to the, each of the fol folders. I know, I know that I've printed them, right? You can also include a note with the folder about where they are. So if you're not storing them chronologically, which I hope that you are, um, you could put a note where, they, where, you know, where you have them stored. Right, so that you would know. So really everything is sort of building a way to, to backtrack um, so that you can find things quickly and easily. But it's, I had to catch up with myself again here. But, um, but it's exactly the same system, it's just digital. So get them by year, then sort the years by events, and stay consistent with your event name. New Year's Day is always NYD. Christmas, always Xmas, right? If you keep things short, um, you're far more likely to actually write those tags and be consistent with things because it's a little faster and easier to do. Okay, so I want to leave you. Uh, Karen's probably going to have some questions, so we'll give her a minute to get questions together. You got a couple of quotes on your um, handout, which I forgot to talk about last time, but just for fun um, and you know something that's a little bit maybe inspiring as you're working. And from Abraham Lincoln, we have there are no bad pictures. That's just how your face looks sometimes, right? Which is, um, there are bad pictures. I'm going to disagree with A, but there are sometimes pictures that are taken and you think, oh, that's not a good picture. And then you're like, well, that's, that's probably what I look like. We have this um, picture in our heads of what we look like, and generally it's uh, of ourselves in our best years, so 21, 22. And then you see that picture and you're like, oh, that's not me. And then you're like, yeah, probably it is. But I just thought that was funny. Which leads us to the ugly photo contest reminder. So as you're sorting, keep those ugly photos set aside so you can choose one for the contest. I think the rule is you can only enter one picture in the contest. Karen can clarify, but I'm pretty sure that's it. And then uh, from Ansel Adams, I just love this one. 
Um, not that I'm an amazing photographer, if half the quote is missing. It's just that sometimes I arrive just when God is ready to have someone click the shutter, right? So he captured these amazing photos and um, just, he was just there at the perfect time. We know my husband's a photographer, so I know he probably sat there for hours, but it was a nice quote. Um, and then from Lucy Maud Montgomery, nothing is ever really lost to us as long as we remember it. So that is the value of what we're doing, of creating these amazing scrapbooks and saving these great pictures, is that when everything else is gone, having these memories, having these pictures, is, is, means that everything isn't gone, everything isn't lost. I mean, you even feel it. Like when I was looking through these pictures of my kids when they were little, it just makes you feel, oh, that was, they were so cute, or that was so fun. It just brings back sort of this flood of, of great emotion. All right, so this week's challenge, establish your physical and computer filing systems. Oh, so many questions. This is why I love Karen, because she brings, big, brings me things with a big print, so I don't have to hunt down my glasses to read anything. So, Barbara Carlson, hi Barbara, um, says, I saw a few people say they didn't scrapbook and therefore didn't have photos to sort. Maybe another piece of homework, deal with the photos on your phone. Yes, so if you, that's a great point, Barbara. Um, we do have all these amazing photos on our phone, and not that I'm going to diss any of my friends here. Is that still a word? That's kind of an 80s word, I think. But it is a little bit annoying when someone says to you, um, oh, let me show you that, let me show you a picture, and they bring up their phone, and then they just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll, scroll, scroll through these tiny pictures, and then they finally stop and they go, oh, no, that's not, right? So dealing with the pictures on your phone, your phone is going to hold things in files as well. So you can take the pictures that you've sorted, I mean that you've taken, and sort them into files on your phone, exact same system, and then when you want to share them or you want to look at them yourself or you want to print them or send them to someone, you can just go, oh, phone, photos. Uh, 2018, India trip, Jodhpur, and then click on that and then show your photos. And so um, for your own, for yourself or for sharing with friends, Barbara's absolutely right. I'm going to add that to my little notes here. Deal with, what's on, deal with your phone photos, even if you're not a scrapbooker. Important for yourself and for others. Joanne says, please say those software packages again that you use for digital. <clears throat> I use Picasa. I get in trouble every time I say that because I don't think they make it anymore. I still have it on my computer and it still works. It was a free download from Google and, um, years ago. I love it because it has some editing features that are fast and easy to use. Um, but since Google, it, it was a go something Google bought, so probably now Google Photos was there's probably something similar that does that. A lot of people use iPhoto, uh, which is, comes with your Mac equipment. Um, and then Microsoft Picture Manager also generally comes with any Microsoft computer or um, operating system that you have. So Picture Manager, iPhoto, and, and then maybe Google has something new. But I use Picasa. I'm going to have to go online and see if it's even a thing that you can download anymore. I love it. Super easy to use. Here's the beautiful, here's the thing that I fell in love with about Picasso. I probably shouldn't be saying this because I don't think they make it anymore. But when I downloaded it, it brought all the pictures from my computer. And those of you who have been with me for a while have heard this story. All the pictures from my computer, anything that was a JPEG, got pulled into this chronological um, timeline in Picasso. And I had taken these adorable pictures, well not adorable pictures, I had taken Halloween pictures of my adorable children and they were lost. I couldn't find them anywhere on my computer and I thought well maybe you didn't download them or maybe you deleted it automatically or whatever or accidentally. Well when Picasso pulled them up, there they were in, you know, uh, November of whatever year it was, probably like 2003, 2003 or 2004. There they were. I was like, oh my gosh, where are they? Well, I was able to get the properties of the picture from Picasa, and it told me what file they were in. And somehow, when I downloaded those pictures, I had the dog's vet records open on my desktop, and 
when I hit download and save, boom, that's where they went. And then never to be seen again, right? Because I didn't ever even look in the dog's vet record file for the Halloween pictures of my kids. So it was a cool um, way to sort of pull everything together. It literally pulled every JPEG on my computer. So there were some weird things that maybe had been saved in email that were like logos for a Safeway store or, you know, some other brand, you know, that I had saved an advertisement for or something. So you're going to see all kinds of weird stuff too, but it was really cool. And I'm sure Picture Manager and iPhoto kind of do that same thing. So, and also Photoshop, if you're a little bit more advanced, which I am not, Photoshop or Lightroom probably are going to do the same thing as well. Donna says, label by calendar year or school year? Oh, great question, Donna. Uh, calendar year. And that is where having your little cheat notes of what grade your kids are in, um, where it pops up, right? So if you, um, so this is 2007. So in 2007, London went from fifth grade to sixth grade and Max went from third grade to fourth grade, right? So I've got cr crossover in the 2007 box. But as a parent, um, it's, it is really challenging because you wanna try and keep that whole school year together. But if you put everything under school year, you know, 2007, right, then what do you do with the things that are not within the school year or when you're thinking about things that aren't school related, you know, how do those fall in? So do the regular chronological year. And then even if you label your photo boxes with some basic information because you are constantly, as a parent of young children, doing things by school year, and you can put that right on the box, 2007, uh, fifth and sixth grade, you know, 2008, sixth and seventh grade for London, and then it's easy to find what you're looking for, but you still are maintaining everything in chronological order because as your kids get older, uh, the school years become less and less important, right? So you, then you still have it in chronological order. The other thing I want to share with you is that once I've scrapped it into a year, I'm going to change the label, you know, to say these are all, these have been scrapped, this is done. And then I know I've used all the photos in that box that I'm going to use for my uh, scrapbook projects. They're still in chronological order if my kids wanted pictures for some reason but one of the things that's really great about it is that I can take that box to my mother's house my sister's house my mother-in-law's house and say here go through there and pick out whatever you want and then they can go through the pictures and and take the pictures that they want and just feel like you're getting more value than to have just boxes of pictures you're never going to use so um, makes it easy or if you're doing anything else, like if you're planning a surprise party or a birthday party or a wedding as your kids get older, you know, so often for weddings, we're doing those like, you know, birth to wedding day pictures. And this makes it easy to pull those in and out. Also, as far as school pictures and those things go, you're going to have a label in there that says these are the school pictures, you know, September 2018 school pics or whatever and that's the beauty of using sticky notes. Some people uh, kind of freak out about the sticky notes because they don't um they don't want to stick things to the front of the photograph okay so you can just write on both sides of it and then stick it to the back of the photo but i've had sticky notes stuck to photos for years with no issue but i write on both sides anyway so no matter how i that ends up stacked up on my desk i can see where it is That's my ocd kicking in there kim says be sure you save your original photos in more than one place. I had 20 years ago and saved to my hard drive. My daughter knocked it on the floor and I lost them. So that's an excellent point also and kind of what I was talking about when I was saying uh, for like my India pictures, I copied and pasted those pictures into the India file. So my all the pictures I took in India are still intact in one file, right? So if I am running a backup, which I do, so, which is a great point. And you can back up to another hard drive at your house, right? I have this little hard drive right here, right? Just your kind of your basic hard drive. I back it up to another hard drive that's downstairs connected to our local server. So once a week, every Friday, I run a backup on this and it backs up to a, a server, a little, another one exactly like this right here at the office. So. Um, 
and they hold tons and tons. So thanks for the reminder on that, Kim. But then you can back things up, and if something happens, like your daughter knocking it on the floor, you still have what you need. Robin asks, is it better to keep all the extra stuff, awards, school papers, programs, with photos or separate from them? I have a horrible mess between the two and can't find anything. Spoiler alert. Um, we'll talk about it in the mementos challenge, but since you are already kind of, if you're finding those things with your photos, put them at least initially now into chronological order. You can put them all into a file folder or something that's chronological or put them into big manila envelopes. Chronological, I use, um, I use expanding project planners and I think I'm gonna send Leanne on another wild goose chase. In the studio next door, all the way in the back left corner, there's a expanding project planner. I think it's in a paper storage box on the store display. That's, it's, I think it's sitting on the shelf right there. So as you're, you want everything to be tied together. So um, like I said, I'm going to talk about this in week seven, or Karen is, because I believe week seven is um, March 5th, and uh, I'll be at Home Shopping Network. Um, so Karen's going to be teaching that class anyway. So I'm spoiling her class. Um, so as you're going through and you're finding things, there's different sort of philosophies about it. If you're trying to keep everything acid-free and photo safe and all that stuff, you don't want to store all those things with your photos. They need to be in their own uh, package, but you want to label back and forth. So if I had mementos for India, I would put a note right on here. Yeah. Woo! I just want to share with you, last week, if you were... Um, if you were here and I sent Leanne next door to look for the Project Life box, which then appeared in a blog post to answer that question, um, and she couldn't find it, and that's because it's right up there on the shelf, clearly labeled Project Life, so it's kind of funny. Anyway, um, so this is an expanding project planner. These are all the mementos that I accumulated from a trip that we went on in 2014. So I've got maps and tickets and postcards and lanyards and tchotchkes and all of those bulky things. You can see it's kind of big and bulky, right? So uh, an expanding project planner is a great place to just be able to stuff everything in together. It has this really big pocket in the middle. So if you've got big things like maps or brochures, they fit in there, but I can just uh, label this with the date, and then I can store it chronologically as well. And when I'm ready to work on this trip um, or, or plan this album, I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to be able to sort through. So it's not in there. I, I carry one of these with me when I travel, and I just add things to it. It stays in my suitcase. It's not in there sorted. It's not by date or thing that we did or whatever. It's just all together. And when I work on my um, project plan or my holding album, then I'm going to go through it and sort it all out um, and put things together with photos. So it's a great way to do that. You can do the same thing in a big manila file folder or a regular file folder, but you do want to get them chronologically and get them labeled with what they are. If you're coming across them now while you're sorting photos, you might as well do that as well. So. Um, Whatever you're going to use, get some handy. You can use also um, like uh, scrap rack, um, super size single pages if you're using a scrap rack or scrap rack binder and just throw everything in there at this point because when you're ready to actually do the project plan, album plan, you're going to sort it out by date or thing that you were doing or whatever it is. Um, I think it's khaki flat or kiki flat. Uh, what do we do with all those old negatives we have? It's hard to pitch them. Oh, that is, it's painful, isn't it, to think about get, getting rid of things. So there's a couple things you can do. First thing is, um, and someone, I'm sure someone who's tuned in this morning has one, HSN cells, like, like me, I'm pimping HSN, but this is a great little tool. This little machine that you feed your negatives through and it turns them into digital photos and you can store them on your computer and you can pitch the negatives with confidence, right? Um, you might want to save a couple because I always think it would be fun to have a couple of strips of negatives in an album because our kids will never see those, right, without that. But you can pitch them because you've got all the pictures off them. And you can also edit that uh, blah, blah, blah. as the, that is working and you see a picture that's 
you know, a picture of nothing, someone's feet or the countertop or whatever weird thing, um, you can delete them right there too. So you kind of sort through. So that's the first option is, and there's services. Um, there's one that's called Legacy Box where you send in all your negatives and they put them all on a digital, in a digital format for you. It's probably, I have no idea how much it costs, but I would assume you buy your own machine for less than Legacy Box is going to charge you to do it. Um, or if you just don't have time, you can sign up to Leg Legacy Box. The other thing is you can go to the photo store, like a camera shop, and they still sell the negative sleeves. So it's like an 8.5 by 11 plastic uh, page with sleeves that will hold four or six negatives in it. It's three-hole punch, so you can put it in a notebook, and then you can put those chronologically and, and have them in that notebook. The downside to the negative notebook is... Um, a lot of work to put them in there and they're not they're I mean I guess you could put them in a fire safe but they're not going to be safe from fire or you know flood or any kind of damage like that whereas if you do the photos digitally and put them on your um, you know your backup drive um, then you're going to be they're safe from all of that if you're backing up somewhere else that's different so a couple of options there what type of notebook is Tiffany using? I'm not sure if you're talking about this notebook, which is just a really hard cover. This was actually a gift from scrapbook.com when I went to visit um, there and do some videos for them. They gave me a little gift bag and it included this. So it's just a really hard cover spiral notebook. If you're asking about this, notebook that I showed earlier. This is just our 12 by 12 craft binder. I'm going to talk more about this after class as part of the product presentation or the product demonstration. So this is just our 12 by 12 craft binder though. So either one. Um, now this, if you're talking about this, this had a hundred pages or has a hundred pages in it. And so I um, did like 30 years. So I gave each year three pages of it. Um, I love... <laughs> I love the spiral notebook aspect and I love like the chunkiness of it and um, I, I'm, the idea that it's kind of like a smash book in, in the sense that because you and then you can just add like you know little if you had extra mementos that you'd already scrapped or um, you know s stickers or whatever you've got in your craft supply I loved that concept of it. What I don't love about it is that it's spiral which means it's a difficult unless you have the right kind of punch to add things into it. Or if you messed up and forgot a tab or put the wrong tabs in wrong order or whatever, you can't, um, you can't move things around, which is the one thing I don't like. But I sacrifice that to sort of have this chunky... For, some th something for, for me, for some reason, like the way it feels and that it's kind of bulky and it doesn't close right, that's, those are things I love. So. But those are the two. Those are the two I'm using. Uh, how many pages did Tiffany allot for each year? Um, it totally depends. I get, I, I'm assuming that you're asking like a year in a scrapbook. And it, it, oh no, it must be this. Just three. Just three for each year. And I just, whether that's good or bad. But there are a lot of punches out there. Like I have the um, We Are Punch for um, the Planner Punch. This one. Right, and it has, it's configurable, like you can put your own, um, you put things in based on which, which kind of planner you're using. So this is a Shelly bag that I've got all the extra ones in, and then this is kind of motivating to me because I needed to look anyway. But it tells you on here, depending on what kind of binder you're using, um, or what kind of planner you're using, which of these little guys to use. So I don't know if it's got a spiral, um, directions for a spiral or not. I'll check it out and I will let you know because then I could add pages, which would make me happy. But this is just We Are. If you use any of the uh, We Are uh, products, they're just, they make great products. And one of the things about them is that they always have instructions printed, well, whenever they can. Some tools don't allow it. But the instructions are oftentimes printed right on the tool itself. So if you lose your little um, instruction book, 
it's there. And they do a really good job, in, in my opinion, um, with um, telling you how to use their project products. And which brings me to another. I'm, sh I should maybe be getting a kickback from We Are today. This is my tab punch. I love this. I love this. I love this. I use it all the time. You saw me do it, label my my um, creative scrapbooker magazine with it, and that is how I created the tabs. And then you can buy these little plastic covers for your tabs, so they stay super durable, right? So I don't know if you can zoom in on there but you can see this like how it's shiny and plastic so the tab the plastic tab goes all the way down onto the paper but it makes it durable so unlike just like a paper tab or a sticker tab it's actually going to last quite a bit longer so those are called um shockingly they're called tab stickers and i believe that you can get both of these items probably at your big box, Michael's, Joann's, but definitely on the We Are Memory Keepers website, which is American Crafts. So, too fun. I love the tab maker. I love it. I'll put tabs on anything. Okay. The top pick looks like a collage of all the picks. How did she do that? Oh, so this is just something that Costco includes. When you order your photos from Costco, you always get an index card. Um, of all of the photos that are, so this pile had a multiple index cards um, on there. So just Costco, it's free. Yeah, I didn't have to, I don't, unless I have some setting automatically set on my photo account at Costco, I, I, I don't recall ever, have a, ever having to do anything to get the index print. It just always comes with those. Catherine says, let's make sure I'm getting all the, answering all these, yes. Catherine asks, maybe TT could do a real live time video of sitting with her computer and doing her photo selection to upload for printing, etc." Maybe I can. I actually, I have, okay, so I've done that for a couple other things. see what I can do. I have this new um, broadcaster that I think will broadcast what's actually on the screen of my computer. So uh, I'll see if we can get that done for you, Catherine. It's a great idea. Joanne says, would love to see how she has tagged photos electronically and put them in folders. Um, that, that You'll see all that if I am able to do that on that video. Um, and if not, I can definitely do some screenshots of photos uh, that are labeled and tagged. So I'll add to my note here. And I'll try to get that done before um, the Memento class, which is class number seven. You'll know about it. We'll put it up on the blog and, and do some posts on Facebook about it as well. Question. When renaming photos from one trip, do you rename each photo or just the whole file? I rename everything the same when I first rename them. So my philosophy on that is when I downloaded, I actually downloaded these pictures by day. We were in a different city. So when I downloaded that day, that, all those photos, I renamed all of them the date, India, and then some of them I put the city name if I knew how to spell it um, when I downloaded them. So there was the India file, and then within the India file, there were uh, the days that we were there and the city that we visited that day. So uh, what, what, we did <laughs> what we did in India was like a, we were on a train and it was kind of like a cruise ship. So um, the train, you got on board the train, it traveled at night, you ate you know, breakfast and dinner on the train, and then when you got to whatever station for the day, that you left the train and you went and toured the city and then you came back and got on the train. So it was a little bit of a unique experience because each day was a, an itinerary for a city. So when I downloaded those, I downloaded them by the day, but I named them all India, the, the year, comma, India, 
and then the name of the city, if I could spell it, to be honest with you. I, some of them I needed to look up the name, so I didn't put it on there. So, so at the very least, um, if I'm searching India, that date, um, or that city name, it's going to pull up all of those photos. And then when I um, go back in and start sorting them into a folder of what I'm going to, um, what I'm actually going to scrap, um, now, now with this, I did it a little bit differently because I wanted to have these uh, for class today, to be like, this is the mess that you're dealing with, and now you're going to sort it by what you're going to scrapbook about. Um, so I would sort them into the ready to scrap or photos to scrap inside that folder as well. And at that point, I might add different... Um, I might add more to the name, right? So it would already say the date, India, the city. I might hit rename and add camel, elephant, whatever the major thing is that I might be looking for in the future, I might add that to those pictures if I had the time to do it. And really, that, that's what it ultimately comes down to is how much time do you have to be tagging or renaming every individual photo. So at the very least, get the date and the main event you know, the date and Christmas, the date and Tisa's birthday, whatever it is on there, and then later you can add more. It's always better to break it down because then you have more options for sorting, but um, are you really ever going to need to, like, do I really need to sort by camel? I'm, that's probably the only pictures I'm ever going to have um, with a camel. I'm probably not going to do any, you know, my life riding camels in all these different places, it's probably not going to be a thing. So it's always just going to be part of the India trip. So however you want to be able to sort and however much you want to be able to sort. But, at the vi but don't do the big thing first so that it's done and you can at least search and find them. Don't wait to download your pictures or wait to add that um, rename on them until you have time to, you know, tag and rename every photo because we, we never have time, right? That's one of the things that gets away from us so quickly. At least do the big sort. I wish my husband was watching today because, as most of you know, he's an amazing photographer, but he chronically downloads pictures um, and doesn't tag them with anything, right? He puts them in this file called travel or whatever, road trip, whatever, some major file with no parameters, and then he can't find the pictures that he needs. Now, I will tell you this, most of our cameras, if they're, the date on them is set properly, um, or if they're Wi-Fi connected or whatever it is, they, they will add, the date is part of the gobbledygook numbers, that you down when you download that are the name of your photo, right? It's usually the date first and then a bunch of different numbers and or maybe the date at the end. So when he needs a photo from a previous trip for some reason, I'm always the one going back to my journal, like when was Park in Bella Coola? Oh, that was 2009. And then I can get in his computer and search out 2009 in those months and use to kind of find it. But it would be a lot easier if he just did that in the first go-round. If you're, if you're listening, honey, today, if you're tuned in, he must not be because my phone would be going off, actually. All right. Last uh, question. And true, what do you do with extra pics after you have scrapped them? So if I, have, if I pulled these pictures and I sort, if I had six per page, but I didn't use six, I only used four, when I'm done, I'm going to go right back to my chronological box and I'm just going to throw them back in chronological order. That is one of the beautiful things about keeping things chronologically rather than sorting them by Christmas pictures or these are pictures of my son London, these are pictures of my son Max, these are pictures of the dog, whatever. Then when you're trying to put things away, you're like, did this come in, should I put that in London's box, blah, blah chronological all day long all the way right so when you're done scrapping if that's the question they're going to go right back into your chronological box whatever you've pulled out and it's going to be easy it's going to be easy to put them um, put them away um, all right and then you can share them easily too you can also put a note like once I scrap the pictures of India I'm going to put could put a note right on there that says these have been scrapped and then I know that they're scrapped, and I don't have to worry about giving them away or sharing them either. So there's some options there. Uh, Charlotte says, I would love to see how Tiffany's, I would love to see some of Tiffany's scrap pages. Will she show us one of the scrapbooks and describe how she designed or made the pages, please? 
Yes. One of my missions with doing the travel book is actually sharing, um, you know, how I scrap and how I design pages and kind of letting you guys uh, see that process from start to finish, which is, here's the start of it. Um, you're going to see the memento organization and how I put those things together. And then I'm going to work through the actual creation of the pages. I am not a fancy award winner, super artsy scrapbooker. I am a storyteller. I like, uh, I like to keep the stuff on my pages simple. I love the stuff. I mean, I love to put stuff on my pages, but it's all pretty simple. I'm not, you're not going to see amazing art. You're just going to see like solid storytelling kind of scrapbooking as we go through um, this, which I'm really, really looking forward to this travel, putting together this travel album. So yes, Charlotte, I'm going to blog and post about it and probably share it with you guys if I get my first pages done before the challenge is over. But it will definitely be on the Get Organized Challenge page as I work through it over the next few months. Christine says, what is a widget notebook? A widget notebook, which is W-D-Y-D-T, what did you do today? Uh, a widget notebook is a really simple way of sitting down before you go to bed at night and <clears throat> you write your goal at the top. Um, if my goal is to sort, you know, an inch of paper every day for a week, then that's what the goal is going to be at the top. And before I go to bed at night, I sit down and I write, what did I do today to move myself closer to that goal, right? <clears throat> it's very simple. It's not a huge journal. It's not a checklist. It's not a planner. It is just a reminder that I had a goal and what did I do to move myself closer to that goal today, widget. And so if you can't write anything down, like you might write down, I sorted six inches of paper. I sorted the half an inch of paper. I moved my paper onto the dining room table so I can sort it tomorrow. You've done something, a little thing or a big thing to move yourself closer to that goal. That's what you write down. If you can't write down anything, you can't go to bed. You have to get up and do something tiny or ginormous to move yourself closer to the goal. And the widget book holds you accountable to yourself. You have to face it every day. And it's, a, it, it's amazing. I mean, it's a tool I've been using for a long time. And it really, it really does have an effect on how productive you are, how focused you are. And it doesn't matter what your goal is. I mean, your goal, your goals could be as simple as, you know, I want to say, I have six kids. My goal is just to stay in front of the laundry, right? And so before you go to bed, I haven't done any laundry today. You just go downstairs, throw a load in the washer, and now you've done something. So it doesn't matter how monstrous your goal is. I want to climb Mount Everest. What did I do today? You know, I went to the rock climbing gym. Or how seemingly minor it is. I want to stay ahead of the laundry. Right when you're just reminded and personally accountable, and then you build amazing habits, which is ultimately the, the side effect of widget is that you build these habits of focus productivity. All right, uh, okay, so those are all the questions. Uh, we'll just go through the challenge checklist for the week. First is going to be establish your physical or and or digital filing system. So what kind of box are you using to store your photos? Get those together. Um, you're going to create a family timeline. You're going to um, create some sorting guides to help you once you've done your family timeline, which it doesn't say there that on the thing, but that's what you're going to do. I can't believe that's not on my list. Um, you're going to sort two boxes, piles, drawers of photos. Um, and one thing I didn't talk about was this is one, this class is going on. This is one, <laughs> usually it's not. I'm sorry, usually it doesn't take this long for photos. I'm sorry to be holding you guys sort of hostage for an extended period of time. Um, sorting photos is completely objective, right? Sorting the rest of your supplies is subjective. It uh, depends on how you think about them. But photos are date driven. And so it's objective, which means you can ask family members to help you. So if you do family game night or family home evening or something like that, get your photos sorted with your family and you will have, a, you'll get the job done, but you'll have a great time sharing those memories as you all sort photos. And if you're gonna do that, make sure that you have a notepad handy because how you remember events 
is completely different than how other people, probably every person in your family remembers events because we all, our memories all click into what's important to us, right? So you'll get great journaling notes as you're going through these pictures and sorting pictures with your family and you'll get a lot done. So you have to sort two boxes, piles, drawers, baskets, whatever you've got, envelopes, whatever it is, however they're broken down, large or small, sort two of them unless you have a family helper recruiting you and then add one more box, bin, drawer, tote, envelope per family member. Um, sort one year of digital photos. Sort four inches of paper. So if you're still doing paper, which most of us are, four inches. Post on Facebook. Tell us about your progress or you can email your progress in. Um, and then last but not least, enjoy your reward. Right? That's a really important part. All right. Thanks for sticking with me. Oh, I'm going to talk about products. So if you want to know about products, stick around for a few more minutes. Um, for the rest of you, get busy. Get busy, crafters. Uh, I'll see you next week. Have a great and productive week. And have really, it should really be fun to sort photos. So don't let yourself get overwhelmed. Start with one box or one envelope at a time and just work through that and then do the next thing. All right. Whoa. Okay, let's talk about products you can use to organize, sort, store, and organize your photos. Um, so, we offer several different options. The first one, you kind of saw, I'm going to do a shortcut here on it. So the first thing is, I didn't even talk about this in class today. So if you're grouping your photos together, um, if you, if you mostly use 4 by 6 this is the Monica Buddy Bag. I've got about 300 photos in the Monica. And this particular batch of photos, I have just sorted using um, colored pieces of paper. So this is a scrapbook uh, layout. And then the next, the green one is the pink, whatever. So inside, the, this is just a Monica. Uh, this is the 4x6 fab file. So they're similar sizes. They hold about the same number of photos. The thing that I like about both of them is this. They're right in my hand, right? So if I want to pull my Disney photos from 2005 to work on them, I can pull it off my shelf with one hand. Same with this. And when I set it on my workspace, it's small and compact and I can work right out of the box. I don't have to have all the photos from Disney pulled out. I can say, okay, I'm going to work on the character photos, and I've got the character photos pre-sorted by mom's photos, London's photos, Max's photos, and I've got my notes on the front. So I can literally work out of this small box with my pictures, with my layout notes, and everything stays kind of small and compact. And whether I'm at a crafting event or I'm at home, when I need to put them away, again, super easy to, you know, close it up and put it away or throw it into my crop tote. Uh, there's a locking tab on this so you're, it's not going to come open. Your pictures stay protected. You can kind of see through the bottom of the box. So I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But if you label the bottom of the file folder and then stand your box on its end, you can actually read what each file folder inside the... Um, fab file has in it. So the fab file and then the, you can see the same, how they divided these up. The, the Monica bag and the 4x6 fab file. If you usually um, use 5x7 photos, the, this fab file comes in a 5x7 also and included in the 4x6 and the 5x7 are those plastic reusable file folders. So this little paper just slides into that pocket. So if I, when I finish Disney, I can take that paper out, put another sheet of paper in with new notes on it about the new photos that are in there. So you just use them project after project. 4 by 6 fab file, and then the Monica buddy bag is what this one is. Uh, next up is the flip and storage page. And I only have one side of this loaded up. But the same kind of idea, right? These are 4 by 6 photos, and they're organized. I just put a little sticky note on the side with um, with what's in them. So if I was project planning, this is a trip to San Diego. Um, I, each event during the trip is in one of the pockets. So I've got a layout in each pocket. And this is the flip and storage page, which fits in. 
So this is the flip and storage binder, right? So it comes preloaded with three pages. You can buy extra flip and storage pages. Um, and it's just a great way to have a smaller profile on your shelf, just kind of a regular binder size. Well, it is a regular binder size, regular three hole punch. Um, and then, so you can get extra pages for that one. The back side of this is five by seven. So you can put four by six photos in there. I don't have any pictures in it, so I'm just gonna steal this one out of my five by seven pocket here. Um, you can put four by six photos in there, but it is big enough for five by sevens as well. So and you've got five pockets on the back and five pockets on the front with the flip and storage page. It's a great way to condense things down and it's very easy um, to move around. Again, put it on the shelf, put it in your crop tote. Um, as far as putting it in your crop tote, it's a binder, so it's open, right? So you need to have put it in with a little bit more care. Whereas with the um, fab file, you can just kind of plop it in there because it's protected on all edges and sides. This is the five by seven, the Fantastic Five storage page. So if you're keep, if you're keeping your uh, photos by layout and you like five by seven, this is a great way to keep them by layout. Um, if you use four by six, which is what I do, a little bit more common, then we also have the perfect six page, which each pocket will hold six photos. So again, I'm using this as if it was a double page spread, left side, right side, right side, left side, sorry. Um, so one uh, double page, double page, double page, right? So it's great for planning as well. So these are standard three hole punch, but of course these pages are 12 and a half by 12 and a half. So while the three hole punch will fit in a regular binder, the pages obviously are too big um, for a regular binder. So this is our 12 by 12 craft supply binder. Uh, it come, the difference between the 12 by 12 craft supply binder and the 12 by 12 spinder binder is that the spinder binder does not have the three ring section in it. It does not have the spinder in it. It's just the cover and it's generally used for people who are working with a scrap rack and they want to store pages off their scrap rack. They pull the spinder and put it in the cover or people who are taking extra sections with them to an event and they want to cover a, a ton of reasons. But when you're looking at it on the website, if you don't have a spinder to use, you want to buy the 12 by 12 craft binder, not the spinder uh, binder cover because it won't have the three ring section in it. So, and then this one is the one that I was kind of showing earlier in class that it has, uh, and I've got my layouts in there started for the Panama um, album or the travel album. Um, and I think that's it for products that we um, offer. I talked a little bit about some other products that are available at um, Michael's or uh, Joann's or your other big box retailer. But as far as products that we carry, um, you've got your choice. The Monica bag, the 4x6 or 5x7 fab file, um, the Perfect 6 storage page, the Fantastic 5 storage page. Now the Fantastic 5 and the Perfect 6 both come in packs of 10. So those are on the scrap rack page. Um, and if you just click on shop by brand, scrap rack, pages and dividers, perfect six, and the fantastic five. I also had a set of dividers in my binder. So if you're building a project planner binder like mine, you're going to want a set of dividers as well. And then the 12 by 12 craft supply binder. So I think that wraps it up. If you have questions, please feel free to email or call. We're happy to answer those for you. Otherwise, I will see all of you get organized challenge crafters next Tuesday. Have a great day. Okay, so now when I search my computer, I can search the year, LT and B-Day, and only get one year. Or I can search uh, LT and B-Day and get every picture of every birthday that I have tagged that way on my computer for London's birthday. Or I can just search birthday, B-D-A-Y, and I'm going to get everybody's birthday pictures for every year. Right? I consistently tag or name my photos the same way, which is where your perpetual calendar comes in, um, so that I can sort consistently by people, by events, by um, places. So, and it's really simple. So perpetual calendar, if you've never seen one, this is a calendar, this is really an old one.
Karen Foster. Not even sure she's still around or that brand is still around. Um, but <clears throat> I have my the way the year on the back. This is my reminder of how to um, how to write the date. No dashes, no spaces, nothing like that. Again, when you're uh, naming photos. The least keystrokes that you have to do, the more likely it is that you're actually going to execute um, the, the consistent strategy for organizing, for tagging your digital photos. So uh, the year is always the same. And then on each of these you, little calendar days, the idea behind the perpetual calendar, or sometimes called a birthday calendar, is that you use the same calendar forever, and it just reminds you, this is January, whose birthdays it are, it, it are, it is, in January and I put the year they were born after right so I know how old they are also Lori Payne was born in 61 so when I send her a birthday card I can send her a harassing card that says you're old okay but you then you see this little one that this how they're this is highlighted in yellow New Year's Day NYD uh, Valentine's Day VDAY St. Patrick's Day STP this is how I remember how I code things from year to year to year. So this is from 2010. For eight years, I've been using these same codes. So if I have pictures from a St. Patrick's Day celebration, I'm going to always add that tag STP. And then I can sort through my computer and just search for in the photo file for STP. And it's going to bring up every St. Patrick's Day photo that I have had since I started doing this. Right? Think about that. Think about how much fun that is if you can find those things. So if my son um, is having a St. Patrick's Day party, I can take pictures of him from St. Patrick's Day from when he was in grade school, middle school, and high school. Now he's getting ready to graduate college and create something fun that's like St. Patrick's Day through the years or whatever. I can only do that because, well, you could, you could do it, but it would be a lot more work if you weren't tagging things that way, right? Now, the beautiful thing about this is for almost a decade we've been printing digital photos so I've got the digital copies and I've got the printed copies and I am just put a P on my photo file or in my fo photo file that says these are printed which means if I wanted to find those pictures I could go to my, ca my, my calendar year box for that year that month and I would find those pictures from St. Patrick's Day for whatever year that it was if they'd already been printed I would also know ding 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 that they had been printed and because of the P and when I go to the box they're not there so I know I've already scrapped them and if I want more of those I'm going to have to reprint them so most of us don't throw away our duplicates or the pictures that we don't use right we just are gonna leave them in chronological order and then when things like this come up you can go back to that box and find exactly what you're looking for it's fast and it's easy and I know they're in the box because I added a P to the title of my file St. You know, Patrick's Day 2018-P, that means those have been printed. Okay? So the perpetual calendar is going to get you through that. It's also going to remind you how you label people's names. So here's my sister. Her name is Teresa. I code everything TISA for her, T-I-S-A, short and sweet and easy. Now, I code everything TISA for her, even though she was born Teresa Irene, when she was a kid, we called her Tisa, and as she got into middle school, she decided she wanted to be called Terry, and then after high school, she decided she wanted to use her middle name, which was Irene, and then as she got older, she went back to Teresa. So if I was using Teresa, Terry, Irene, Teresa, and tagging things with her name through the years, I would have to search all four of those names. This keeps it easy. Same thing when people get married. Whatever that tag is, you don't have to worry that they changed their last name. It's all going to be easy to just find them. So create a perpetual calendar. It can be a physical calendar like this. You can buy them on the internet. You can do the same thing by creating a, just an Excel spreadsheet that goes through the months as well. Or you could include it on your family timeline if you wanted to do something like that, right? Just um, include some pages on the front, in the front section because you're planning ahead, which I didn't do. Um, that is your perpetual calendar or your tag, tag names for how you're going you're gonna to name people. I didn't think about that before I did it. Maybe I'm going to use the back pages because I have a few extra in my book. Okay, so digital is going to be exactly the same though. You're going to be year, event, 
And then once you sort the pictures, say if I was sorting the India trip pictures digitally before I printed them, I would go into India and I would say, okay, I'm going to start six, <coughs> six files for the six things I'm chronicling in India, getting there, Delhi, the train. And then as I look through the pictures, I would move the picture or a copy of it. I know some people kind of freak out about they want to keep everything together. So I could just copy and paste. So pictures of getting there, copy, paste into the file folder. Now when I'm ready to print those, I can go right to the online Costco.com where I have my pictures printed. And I can upload those um, pictures. And I've chosen the pictures. I know how many I'm going to do. I know what sizes they are. I can download them to Costco and have them all printed. And I can add a capital P to the each of the fol folders. I know, I know that I've printed them, right? You can also include a note with the folder about where they are. So if you're not storing them chronologically, which I hope that you are, um, you could put a note where, they, where, you know, where you have them stored, right, so that you would know. So really everything is sort of building a way to, to backtrack um, so that you can find things quickly and easily. But it's, <clears throat> I had to catch up with myself again here. But, um, but it's exactly the same system, it's just digital. So get them by year, then sort the years by events, and stay consistent with your event name. New Year's Day is always NYD. Christmas, always Xmas, right? If you keep things short, um, you're far more likely to actually write those tags and be consistent with things because it's a little faster and easier to do. Okay, so I want to leave you. Uh, Karen's probably going to have some questions, so we'll give her a minute to get questions together. You got a couple of quotes on your um, handout, which I forgot to talk about last time, but just for fun um, and you know something that's a little bit maybe inspiring as you're working. And from Abraham Lincoln, we have, there are no bad pictures. That's just how your face looks sometimes, right? Which is, um, there are bad pictures. I'm going to disagree with Abe. But there are sometimes pictures that are taken, and you think, oh, that's not a good picture. And then you're like, well, that's, that's probably what I look like. We have this um, picture in our heads of what we look like, and generally it's uh, of ourselves in our best years, so 21, 22. And then you see that picture and you're like, oh, that's not me. And then you're like, yeah, probably it is. But I just thought that was funny. Which leads us to the ugly photo contest reminder. So as you're sorting, keep those ugly photos set aside so you can choose one for the contest. I think the rule is you can only enter one picture in the contest. Karen can clarify, but I'm pretty sure that's it. And then uh, from Ansel Adams, I just love this one. Um, not that I'm an amazing photographer, if half the quote is missing. It's just that sometimes I arrive just when God is ready to have someone click the shutter, right? So he captured these amazing photos and um, just, he was just there at the perfect time. We know my husband's a photographer, so I know he probably sat there for hours, but it was an, a nice quote. Um, and then from Lucy Maud Montgomery, nothing is ever really lost to us as long as we remember it. So that is the value of what we're doing, of creating these amazing scrapbooks and saving these great pictures is that when everything else is gone, having these memories, having these pictures is, is, means that everything isn't gone, everything isn't lost. I mean, you even feel it. Like when I was looking through these pictures of my kids when they were little, it just makes you feel, oh, that was, they were so cute or that was so fun. It just brings back sort of this flood of, of great emotion. All right, so this week's challenge. Establish your physical and computer filing systems. Oh, so many questions. This is why I love Karen, because she brings, big, brings me things with a big print, so I don't have to hunt down my glasses to read anything. So, Barbara Carlson, hi Barbara, um, says, I saw a few people say they didn't scrapbook and therefore didn't have photos to sort. Maybe another piece of homework, deal with the photos on your phone. Yes, so if you, that's a great point, Barbara. Um, we do have all these amazing photos on our phone, and not that I'm going to diss any of my friends here. Is that still a word? That's kind of an 80s word, I think. But it is a little bit annoying when someone says to you, um, oh, let me show you that. Let me show you a picture. And they bring up their phone, and then they just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll, scroll, scroll through these tiny pictures, and then they finally stop and they go, oh, no, that's not. Right? So... 
dealing with the pictures on your phone, your phone is going to hold things in files as well. So you can take the pictures that you've sorted, I mean that you've taken, and sort them into files on your phone, exact same system. And then when you want to share them or you want to look at them yourself or you want to print them or send them to someone, you can just go, oh, phone, photos, uh, 2018, India trip, Jodhpur, and then click on that and then show your photos. And so um, for, your own, for yourself or for sharing with friends, Barbara's absolutely right. I'm going to add that to my little notes here. Deal with, what's on, deal with your phone photos, even if you're not a scrapbooker important for yourself and for others. Joanne says, please say those software packages again that you use for digital. <clears throat> I use Picasa. I get in trouble every time I say that because I don't think they make it anymore. I still have it on my computer and it still works. It was a free download from Google and um, years ago. I love it because it has some editing features that are fast and easy to use. Um, but since Google, it, it was a go something Google bought, so probably now Google Photos was, there's probably something similar that does that. A lot of people use iPhoto, uh, which is, comes with your Mac equipment, um, and then Microsoft Picture Manager also generally comes with any Microsoft computer or um, operating system that you have. So Picture Manager, iPhoto, and, and then maybe Google has something new, but I use Picasa. I'm going to have to go online and see if it's even a thing that you can download anymore. I love it. Super easy to use. Here's the beautiful, here's the thing that I fell in love with about Picasso. I probably shouldn't be saying this because I don't think they make it anymore. But when I downloaded it, it brought all the pictures from my computer. And those of you who have been with me for a while have heard this story. All the pictures from my computer, anything that was a JPEG, got pulled into this chronological um, timeline in Picasso. And I had taken these adorable pictures, well not adorable pictures, I had taken Halloween pictures of my adorable children and they were lost. I couldn't find them anywhere on my computer and I thought well maybe you didn't download them or maybe you deleted it automatically or whatever or accidentally. Well when Picasso pulled them up, there they were in, you know, uh, November of whatever year it was, probably like 2003, 2003 or 2004. There they were. I was like, oh my gosh, where are they? Well, I was able to get the properties of the picture from Picasa, and it told me what file they were in. And somehow, when I downloaded those pictures, I had the dog's vet records open on my desktop, and when I hit download and save, boom, that's where they went. And then never to be seen again, right? Because I didn't ever even look in the dog's vet record file for the Halloween pictures of my kids. So it was a cool um, way to sort of pull everything together. It literally pulled every JPEG on my computer. So there were some weird things that maybe had been saved in email that were like logos for a Safeway store or, you know, some other brand, you know, that I had saved an advertisement for or something. So you're going to see all kinds of weird stuff too, but it was really cool. And I'm sure Picture Manager and iPhoto kind of do that same thing. So, And also Photoshop, if you're a little bit more advanced, which I am not, Photoshop or Lightroom probably are going to do the same thing as well. Donna says, label by calendar year or school year? Oh, great question, Donna. Uh, calendar year. And that is where having your little cheat notes of what grade your kids are in, um, where it pops up, right? So if you, um, so this is 2007. So in 2007, London went from fifth grade to sixth grade and Max went from third grade to fourth grade, right? So I've got cr crossover in the 2007 box. But as a parent, um, it's, it is really challenging because you want to try and keep that whole school year together. But if you put everything under school year, you know, 2007, right, then what do you do with the things that are not within the school year or when you're thinking about things that aren't school related, you know, how do those fall in? So do the regular chronological year. And then even if you label your photo boxes, with some basic information because you are constantly, as a parent of young children, doing things by school year. And you can put that right on the box, 2007, 5th uh, and 6th grade, you know, 2008, 6th and 7th grade. 
for London, and then it's easy to find what you're looking for, but you still are maintaining everything in chronological order. Because as your kids get older, uh, the school years become less and less important, right? So you, then you still have it in chronological order. The other thing I want to share with you is that once I've scrapped an into a year, I'm going to change the label, you know, to say these are all these have been scrapped. This is done, and then I know I've used all the photos in that box that I'm going to use for my uh, scrapbook projects. They're still in chronological order if my kids wanted pictures for some reason but one of the things that's really great about it is that I can take that box to my mother's house my sister's house my mother-in-law's house and say here go through there and pick out whatever you want and then they can go through the pictures and and take the pictures that they want and just feel like you're getting more value than to have just boxes of pictures you're never going to use so um, makes it easy or if you're doing anything else, like if you're planning a surprise party or a birthday party or a wedding as your kids get older, you know, so often for weddings, we're doing those like, you know, birth to wedding day pictures, and this makes it easy to pull those in and out. Also, as far as school pictures and those things go, you're going to have a label in there that says these are the school pictures, you know, September 2018 school pics or whatever and that's the beauty of using sticky notes. Some people uh, kind of freak out about the sticky notes because they don't um, they don't want to stick things to the front of the photograph okay so you can just write on both sides of it and then stick it to the back of the photo but I've had sticky notes stuck to photos for years with no issue but I write on both sides anyway so no matter how I that ends up stacked up on my desk I can see where it is it's my OCD kicking in there Kim says be sure you save your original photos in more than one place. I had 20 years ago and saved to my hard drive. My daughter knocked it on the floor and I lost them. So that's an excellent point also and kind of what I was talking about when I was saying uh, for like my India pictures, I copied and pasted those pictures into the India file. So my all the pictures I took in India are still intact in one file, right? So if I am running a backup, which I do, so, which is a great point, and you can back up to another hard drive at your house, right? I have this little hard drive right here, right? Just your kind of your basic hard drive. I back it up to another hard drive that's downstairs connected to our local server. So once a week, every Friday, I run a backup on this, and it backs up to a, a server, a little, another one exactly like this right here at the office. So. Um, and they hold tons and tons so thanks for the reminder on that Kim but then you can back things up and if something happens like your daughter knocking it on the floor you still have what you need Robin asks is it better to keep all the extra stuff awards school papers programs with photos or separate from them I have a horrible mess between the two and can't find anything spoiler alert um, we'll talk about it in the mementos challenge but since you are already kind of if you're finding those things with your photos put them at least initially now into chronological order you can put them all into a file folder or something that's chronological or put them into big manila envelopes chronological I use um, I use expanding project planners and I think I'm gonna send Leanne on another wild goose chase in the studio next door all the way in the back left corner there's a expanding project planner. I think it's in a paper storage box on the store display. That's it's, I think it's sitting on the shelf right there. So as you're, you want everything to be tied together. So um, like I said, I'm going to talk about this in week seven, or Karen is, because I believe week seven is um, March 5th, and uh, I'll be at Home Shopping Network. Um, so Karen's going to be teaching that class anyway. So I'm spoiling her class. Um, so as you're going through and you're finding things, there's different sort of philosophies about it. If you're trying to keep everything acid free and photo safe and all that stuff, you don't want to store all those things with your photos. They need to be in their own uh, package, but you want to label back and forth. So if I had mementos for India, I would put a note right on here. Yeah. Woo! I just want to share with you, last week if you were, um, if you were here and I sent Leanne next door to look for the Project Life box, which then appeared in a blog post to answer that question, um, 
and she couldn't find it, and that's because it's right up there on the shelf, clearly labeled Project Life, so it's kind of funny. Anyway, um, so this is an expanding project planner. These are all the mementos that I accumulated from a trip that we went on in 2014. So I've got maps and tickets and postcards and lanyards and tchotchkes and all of those bulky things. You can see it's kind of big and bulky, right? So uh, an expanding project planner is a great place to just be able to stuff everything in together. It has this really big pocket in the middle. So if you've got big things like maps or brochures, they fit in there. But I can just uh, label this with the date and then I can store it chronologically as well. And when I'm ready to work on this trip um, or, or plan this album, I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to be able to sort through. So it's not in there. I, I carry one of these with me when I travel and I just add things to it. It stays in my suitcase. It's not in there sorted. It's not by date or thing that we did or whatever. It's just all together. And when I work on my um, project plan or my holding album, then I'm going to go through it and sort it all out. Um, and put things together with photos. So it's a great way to do that. You can do the same thing in a big manila file folder or a regular file folder, but you do want to get them chronologically and get them labeled with what they are. If you're coming across them now while you're sorting photos, you might as well do that as well. So um, whatever you're going to use, get some handy. You can use also um, like uh, scrap rack, um, super size single pages if you're using a scrap rag or scrap rack binder and just throw everything in there at this point because when you're ready to actually do the project plan album plan you're going to sort it out by date or thing that you were doing or whatever it is um uh, i think it's khaki flat or kiki flat uh what do we do with all those old negatives we have it's hard to pitch them oh that is it's painful isn't it to think about get, getting rid of things so there's a couple things you can do First thing is, um, and someone, I'm sure someone who's tuned in this morning has one, HSN cells, like, like me, I'm pimping HSN, but this is a great little tool. This little machine that you feed your negatives through and it turns them into digital photos and you can store them on your computer and you can pitch the negatives with confidence, right? Um, you might want to save a couple because I always think it would be fun to have a couple of strips of negatives in an album because our kids... We'll never see those, right, without that. But you can pitch them because you've got all the pictures off them. And you can also edit that uh, blah, blah, blah. as the, that is working and you see a picture that's, you know, a picture of nothing, someone's feet or the countertop or whatever weird thing, um, you can delete them right there too. So you kind of sort through. So that's the first option is, and there's services. Um, there's one that's called Legacy Box where you send in all your negatives and they put them all on a digital in a digital format for you. It's probably, I have no idea how much it costs, but I would assume if you buy your own machine for less than Legacy Box is going to charge you to do it. Um, or if you just don't have time, you can sign up to Leg Legacy Box. The other thing is you can go to the photo store, like a camera shop, and they still sell the negative sleeves. So it's like an eight and a half by 11 plastic uh, page with sleeves that'll hold four or six negatives in it. It's three hole punch so you can put it in a notebook and then you can put those chronologically and, and have them in that notebook. The downside to the negative notebook is um, it's a lot of work to put them in there and they're not, they're, I mean I guess you could put them in a fire safe but they're not going to be safe from fire or you know flood or any kind of damage like that whereas if you do the photos digitally and put them on your, um, you know, your backup drive, um, then you're going to be, they're safe from all of that if you're backing up somewhere else that's different. So uh, a couple of options there. What type of notebook is Tiffany using? I'm not sure if you're talking about this notebook, which is just a really hard cover. This was actually a gift from scrapbook.com when I went to visit um, there and do some videos for them. They gave me a little gift bag and it included this. So it's just a really hardcover spiral notebook. If you're asking about this notebook that I showed earlier, this is just our 12 by 12 craft binder. I'm going to talk more about this after class as part of the product presentation or the product demonstration. So this is just our 12 by 12 craft binder though. So either one. 
Um, now this, if you're talking about this, this had a hundred pages or has a hundred pages in it. And so I um, did like 30 years. So I gave each year three pages of it. Um, I love, <laughs> I love the spiral notebook aspect and I love like the chunkiness of it and um, I, I'm, the idea that it's kind of like a smash book in, in the sense that because you and then you can just add like you know little if you had extra mementos that you'd already scrapped or um, you know s stickers or whatever you've got in your craft supply I loved that concept of it what I don't love about it is that it's spiral which means it's a difficult unless you have the right kind of punch to add things into it or if you messed up and forgot a tab or put the wrong tabs in wrong order or whatever you can't um, you can't move things around which is the one thing I don't like but I sacrifice that to sort of have this chunky for something something for, for me for some reason like the way it feels and that it's kind of bulky and it doesn't close right that's those are things I love so but those are the two. Those are the two I'm using. Uh, how many pages did Tiffany allot for each year? Um, it totally depends. I get, I, I'm assuming that you're asking like a year in a scrapbook. And it, it, oh no, it must be this. Just three. Just three for each year. And I just, whether that's good or bad. But there are a lot of punches out there. Like I have the um, We Are punch for um, the planner punch. This one. Right, and it has, it's configurable, like you can put your own, um, you put things in based on which, which kind of planner you're using. So this is a Shelly bag that I've got all the extra ones in, and then this is kind of motivating to me because I needed to look anyway. But it tells you on here, depending on what kind of binder you're using, um, or what kind of planner you're using, which of these little guys to use. So I don't know if it's got a spiral, um, directions for a spiral or not. I'll check it out and I will let you know because then I could add pages, which would make me happy. But this is just We Are. If you use any of the uh, We Are uh, products, they're just, they make great products. And one of the things about them is that they always have instructions printed well whenever they can some tools don't allow it but the instructions are oftentimes printed right on the tool itself so if you lose your little um, instruction book it's there and they do a really good job in, in my opinion um, with um, telling you how to use their project products and which brings me to another I'm sh I should maybe be getting a kickback from we are today this is my tab punch I love this I love this I love this I use it all the time you saw me do it, label my my um, creative scrapbooker magazine with it and that is how I created the tabs and then you can buy these little plastic covers for your tabs so they stay super durable right so I don't know if you can zoom in on there but you can see this like how it's shiny and plastic so the tab the plastic tab goes all the way down onto the paper but it makes it durable so unlike just like a paper tab or a sticker tab it's actually going to last quite a bit longer so those are called um, shockingly they're called tab stickers and I believe that you can get both of these items probably at your big box michael's joann's but definitely on the we are memory keepers website which is american crafts so two fun i love the tab maker i love it i'll put tabs on anything okay the top pick looks like a collage of all the picks how did she do that oh so this is just something that costco includes when you order your photos from costco you always get an index card um, of all of the photos that are so this pile had a multiple index cards um, on there so just Costco it's free yeah I didn't have to I don't unless I have some setting automatically set on my photo account at Costco I, I, I don't recall ever have a, ever having to do anything to get the index print it just always comes with those 
Catherine says, let's make sure I'm getting all the answering all these yes. Catherine asks, maybe TT could do a real live time video of sitting with her computer and doing her photo selection to upload for printing, etc. Maybe I can. I actually, I have, okay, so I've done that for a couple other things. I'll see what I can do. I have this new um, broadcaster that I think will broadcast what's actually on the screen of my computer. So uh, I'll see if we can get that done for you, Catherine. It's a great idea. Joanne says, would love to see how she has tagged photos electronically and put them in folders. Um, that, that you'll see all that if I am able to do that on that video. Um, and if not, I can definitely do some screenshots of photos uh, that are labeled and tagged. So I'll add to my note here. And I'll try to get that done before um, the memento class, which is class number seven. You'll know about it. We'll put it up on the blog and, and do some posts on Facebook about it as well. Question. When renaming photos from one trip, do you rename each photo or just the whole file? I rename everything the same when I first rename them. So my philosophy on that is when I downloaded, I actually downloaded these pictures by day. We were in a different city. So when I downloaded that day, that, all those photos, I renamed all of them the date, India, and then some of them I put the city name if I knew how to spell it um, when I downloaded them. So there was the India file, and then within the India file, there were uh, the days that we were there and the city that we visited that day. So uh, what, what, we did <laughs> what we did in India was like a, we were on a train and it was kind of like a cruise ship. So um, the train, you got on board the train, it traveled at night, you ate you know, breakfast and dinner on the train, and then when you got to whatever station for the day, that you left the train and you went and toured the city and then you came back and got on the train. So it was a little bit of a unique experience because each day was a, an itinerary for a city. So when I downloaded those, I downloaded them by the day, but I named them all India, the, the year, comma, India, and then the name of the city if I could spell it, to be honest with you. I, some of them I needed to look up the name so I didn't put it on there. So, so at the very least, um, if I'm searching India, that date, um, or that city name, it's going to pull up all of those photos. And then when I um, go back in and start sorting them into a folder of what I'm going to, um, what I'm actually going to scrap. Um, now, now with this, I did it a little bit differently because I wanted to have these uh, for class today to be like this is the mess that you're dealing with and now you're going to sort it by what you're going to scrapbook about. Um, so I would sort them into the ready to scrap or photos to scrap inside that folder as well and at that point I might add different, um, I might add more to the name, right? So it would already say the date, India, the city. I might hit rename and add camel, elephant, Whatever the major thing is that I might be looking for in the future, I might add that to those pictures if I had the time to do it. And really, that, that's what it ultimately comes down to, is how much time do you have to be tagging or renaming every individual photo? So at the very least, get the date and the main event, you know, the date and Christmas, the date and Tisa's birthday, whatever it is on there, and then later you can add more it's always better to break it down because then you have more options for sorting, but um, are you really ever going to need to, like, do I really need to sort by camel? I'm, that's probably the only pictures I'm ever going to have um, with a camel. I'm probably not going to do any, you know, my life riding camels in all these different places. That's probably not going to be a thing, so it's always just going to be part of the India trip. So however you want to be able to sort and however much you want to be able to sort, but at the vi but don't. Do the big thing first so that it's done and you can at least search and find them. 
don't wait to download your pictures or wait to add that um, rename on them until you have time to you know tag and rename every photo because we, we never have time right that's one of the things that gets away from us so quickly at least do the big sort I wish my husband was watching today because as most of you know he's an amazing photographer but he chronically downloads pictures um, and doesn't tag them with anything right he puts them in this file called travel or whatever road trip whatever some major file with no parameters and then he can't find the pictures that he needs now I will tell you this most of our cameras if they're the date on them is set properly um, or if they're Wi-Fi connected or whatever it is they they will add the date is part of the gobbledygook numbers that you down when you download that are the name of your photo right it's usually the date first and then a bunch of different numbers and or maybe the date at the end so when he needs a photo from a previous trip for some reason I'm always the one going back to my journal like when was park in Bella Coola, oh, that was 2009, and then I can get in his computer and search out 2009 in those months and use to kind of find it. But it'd be a lot easier if he just did that in the first go round. If you're if you're listening, honey, today, if you're tuned in, he must not be because my phone would be going off actually. All right. Last uh, question and true, what do you do with extra pics after you have scrapped them? So if I have, if I pulled these pictures and I sort, if I had six per page, but I didn't use six, I only used four. When I'm done, I'm going to go right back to my chronological box and I'm just going to throw them back in chronological order. That is one of the beautiful things about keeping things chronologically rather than sorting them by Christmas pictures or these are pictures of my son London, these are pictures of my son Max, these are pictures of the dog, whatever. Then when you're trying to put things away, you're like, did this come in, should I put that in London's box, blah, blah chronological all day long all the way right so when you're done scrapping if that's the question they're gonna go right back into your chronological box whatever you've pulled out and it's gonna be easy it's gonna be easy to put them um, put them away um, all right and then you can share them easily too you can also put a note like once I scrap the pictures of India I'm gonna put could put a note right on there that says these have been scrapped and then I know that they're scrapped and I don't have to worry about giving them away or sharing them either. So there's some options there. Uh, Charlotte says, I would love to see how Tiffany's, I would love to see some of Tiffany's scrap pages. Will she show us one of the scrapbooks and describe how she designed or made the pages, please? Yes. One of my missions with doing the travel book is actually sharing um, you know how I scrap and how I design pages and kind of letting you guys uh, see that process from start to finish which is here's the start of it um, you're gonna see the memento organization and how I put those things together and then I'm gonna work through the actual creation of the pages I am not a fancy award winner super artsy scrapbooker I am a storyteller I like uh, I like to keep the stuff on my pages simple. I love the stuff. I mean, I love to put stuff on my pages, but it's all pretty simple. I'm not, you're not going to see amazing art. You're just going to see like solid storytelling kind of scrapbooking as we go through um, this, which I'm really, really looking forward to this travel, putting together this travel album. So yes, Charlotte, I'm going to blog and post about it and probably share it with you guys if I get my first pages done before the challenge is over but it will definitely be on the get organized challenge page as I work through it over the next few months Christine says what is a widget notebook a widget notebook which is W D Y D T what did you do today uh, a widget notebook is a really simple way of sitting down before you go to bed at night and <clears throat> you write your goal at the top um, if my goal is to sort, you know, an inch of paper every day for a week, then that's what the goal is going to be at the top. And before I go to bed at night, I sit down and I write, what did I do today to move myself closer to that goal, right? <clears throat> it's very simple. It's not a huge journal. It's not a checklist. It's not a planner. It is just a reminder that I had a goal and what did I do to move myself closer to that goal today, widget. And so if you can't write anything down, like you might write down, I sorted six inches of paper. I sorted the half an inch of paper. I moved my paper onto the dining room table so I can sort it tomorrow. 
you've done something, a little thing or a big thing to move yourself closer to that goal, that's what you write down. If you can't write down anything, you can't go to bed. You have to get up and do something tiny or ginormous to move yourself closer to the goal. And the widget book holds you accountable to yourself. You have to face it every day. And it's, a, it, it's amazing. I mean, it's a tool I've been using for a long time. And it really, it really does have an effect on how productive you are, how focused you are. And it doesn't matter what your goal is. I mean, your goal, your goals could be as simple as, you know, I want to say, I have six kids. My goal is just to stay in front of the laundry, right? And so before you go to bed, I haven't done any laundry today. You just go downstairs, throw a load in the washer, and now you've done something. So it doesn't matter how monstrous your goal is. I want to climb Mount Everest. What did I do today? You know, I went to the rock climbing gym. Or how seemingly minor it is. I want to stay ahead of the laundry, right? When you're just reminded and personally accountable and then you build amazing habits, which is ultimately the, the side effect of widget is that you build these habits of focus productivity. All right. Uh, okay. So those are all the questions. Uh, we'll just go through the challenge checklist for the week. First is going to be establish your physical or and or digital filing system. So what kind of box are you using to store your photos? Get those together. Um, you're going to create a family timeline. You're going to um, create some sorting guides to help you once you've done your family timeline, which it doesn't say there that on the thing, but that's what you're going to do. I can't believe that's not on my list. Um, you're going to sort two boxes, piles, drawers of photos. Um, and one thing I didn't talk about was, this is one, this class is going on, this is one, <laughs> usually it's not, I'm sorry, usually it doesn't take this long for photos, I'm sorry to be holding you guys sort of hostage for an extended period of time. Um, sorting photos is completely objective, right? Sorting the rest of your supplies is subjective, it uh, depends on how you think about them, but photos are date driven. And so it's objective, which means you can ask family members to help you. So if you do family game night or family home evening or something like that, get your photos sorted with your family and you will have, a, you'll get the job done, but you'll have a great time sharing those memories as you all sort photos. And if you're gonna do that, make sure that you have a notepad handy because how you remember events is completely different than how other people probably every person in your family remembers events because we all, our memories all click into what's important to us, right? So you'll get great journaling notes as you're going through these pictures and sorting pictures with your family and you'll get a lot done. So you have to sort two boxes, piles, drawers, baskets, whatever you've got, envelopes, whatever it is, however they're broken down, large or small, sort two of them unless you have a family helper recruiting you and then add one more box, bin, drawer, tote, envelope per family member. Um, sort one year of digital photos. Sort four inches of paper. So if you're still doing paper, which most of us are, four inches. Post on Facebook. Tell us about your progress or you can email your progress in. Um, and then last but not least, enjoy your reward. Right? That's a really important part. All right. Thanks for sticking with me. Oh, I'm going to talk about products. So if you want to know about products, stick around for a few more minutes. Um, for the rest of you, get busy. Get busy, crafters. Uh, I'll see you next week. Have a great and productive week. And have really, it should really be fun to sort photos. So don't let yourself get overwhelmed. Start with one box or one envelope at a time and just work through that and then do the next thing. All right. Oh, okay, let's talk about products you can use to organize, sort, store, and organize your photos. Um, so we offer several different options. The first one you kind of saw, I'm going to do a shortcut here on it. So the first thing is I didn't even talk about this in class today. So if you're grouping your photos together, um, if you, if you mostly use four by six, this is the Monica Buddy Bag. I've got about 300 photos in the Monica. And this particular batch of photos, I have just sorted 
using um, colored pieces of paper. So this is a scrapbook uh, layout, and then the next, the green one is, the pink, whatever. So inside the, this is just a Monica. Uh, this is the 4x6 fab file. So they're similar sizes. They hold about the same number of photos. The thing that I like about both of them is this. They're right in my hand, right? So if I want to pull my Disney photos from 2005 to work on them, I can pull it off my shelf with one hand, same with this, and when I set it on my workspace, it's small and compact, and I can work right out of the box. I don't have to have all the photos from Disney pulled out. I can say, okay, I'm going to work on the character photos, and I've got the character photos pre-sorted by mom's photos, London's photos, Max's photos, and I've got my notes on the front. So I can literally work out of this small box with my pictures, with my layout notes, and everything stays kind of small and compact. And whether I'm at a crafting event or I'm at home, when I need to put them away, again, super easy to, you know, close it up and put it away or throw it into my crop tote. Uh, there's a locking tab on this so you're, it's not going to come open. Your pictures stay protected. You can kind of see through the bottom of the box. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But if you label the bottom of the file folder and then stand your box on its end, you can actually read what each file folder inside the... Um, fab file has in it. So the fab file and then the, you can see the same, how I divided these up. The, the Monica bag and the 4x6 fab file. If you usually um, use 5x7 photos, the, this fab file comes in a 5x7 also and included in the 4x6 and the 5x7 are those plastic reusable file folders. So this little paper just slides into that pocket. So if I, when I finish Disney, I can take that paper out, put another sheet of paper in with new notes on it about the new photos that are in there. So you just use them project after project. Four by six fab file, and then the Monica buddy bag is what this one is. Uh, next up is the flip and storage page. And I only have one side of this loaded up, but the same kind of idea, right? These are four by six photos, and they're organized. I just put a little sticky note on the side with um, with what's in them. So if I was project planning, this is a trip to San Diego. Um, I, each event during the trip is in one of the pockets. So I've got a layout in each pocket. And this is the flip and storage page, which fits in. So this is the flip and storage binder, right? So it comes preloaded with three pages. You can buy extra flip and storage pages. Um, and it's just a great way to have a smaller profile on your shelf, just kind of a regular binder size. Well, it is a regular binder size, regular three hole punch. Um, and then, so you can get extra pages for that one. The back side of this is five by seven. So you can put four by six photos in there. I don't have any pictures in it, so I'm just going to steal this one out of my 5x7 pocket here. Um, you can put 4x6 photos in there, but it is big enough for 5x7s as well. So and you've got five pockets on the back and five pockets on the front with the flip and storage page. It's a great way to condense things down, and it's very easy um, to move around. Again, put it on the shelf, put it in your crop tote. Um, as far as putting it in your crop tote, it's a binder, so it's open, right? So you need to have to put it in with a little bit more care. Whereas with the um, fab file, you can just kind of plop it in there because it's protected on all edges and sides. This is the five by seven, the Fantastic Five storage page. So if you're keep, if you're keeping your uh, photos by layout and you like five by seven, this is a great way to keep them by layout. Um, if you use 4x6, which is what I do, a little bit more common, then we also have the perfect 6 page, which each pocket will hold 6 photos. So again, I'm using this as if it was a double page spread, left side, right side, right side, left side, sorry. Um, so one uh, double page, double page, double page, right? So it's great for planning as well. So these are standard three hole punch, but of course these pages are 12 and a half by 12 and a half. So while the three hole punch will fit in a regular binder, the pages obviously are too big 
um, for a regular binder. So this is our 12 by 12 craft supply binder. Uh, it come, the difference between the 12 by 12 craft supply binder and the 12 by 12 spinder binder is that the spinder binder does not have the three ring section in it. It does not have the spinder in it. It's just the cover and it's generally used for people who are working with a scrap rack and they want to store pages off their scrap rack. They pull the spinder and put it in the cover or people who are taking extra sections with them to an event and they want to cover a, a ton of reasons. But when you're looking at it on the website, if you don't have the spinder to use, you want to buy the 12 by 12 craft binder, not the spinder uh, binder cover because it won't have the three ring section in it. So, and then this one this is the one that I was kind of showing earlier in class that it has, uh, and I've got my layouts in there started for the Panama um, album or the travel album. Um, and I think that's it for products that we um, offer. I talked a little bit about some other products that are available at um, Michael's or uh, Joann's or your other big box retailer, but as far as products that we carry, um, you've got your choice, the Monica bag, the 4x6 or 5x7 fab file, um, the Perfect 6 storage page, the Fantastic 5 storage page. Now, the Fantastic 5 and the Perfect 6 both come in packs of 10. So those are on the Scrap Rack page. Um, and if you just click on Shop by Brand, Scrap Rack, Pages and Dividers, Perfect 6, and the Fantastic 5. I also had a set of dividers in my binder. So if you're building a project planner binder like mine, you're going to want a set of dividers as well and then the 12 by 12 craft supply binder. So I think that wraps it up. If you have questions, please feel free to email or call. We're happy to answer those for you. Otherwise, I will see all of you get Organized Challenge crafters next Tuesday. Have a great day.